On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are discussing Star Trek, the original series, 103, The Corbomite Maneuver, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into Star Trek Universe. I am David C. Robertson. You are Effie Oppelius. And I, I am. Yeah, sorry. Was I that <laughs> off on my timing that you had to jump in and introduce me? You know, we should really get this intro thing figured out. It, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't your fault. I, I don't know. <laughs> we were both hesitant. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hi. I'm Effie. <laughs> and I am Dave, you know me. Uh, so this episode, Corbin Might Maneuver, we're continuing our little s- series within a series, reviewing episodes of the original Star Trek. And then we're going in production order, in case you were like, 103, that's not the third episode. How dare you, it's the 10th, according to Wikipedia and all the other listings, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's, it, it's, it's confusing for me to, like, tick off on TV time as well. Because the pilot is a special, and then season one is all over the place, and yep. it's, it's, I have to keep saying never like for this show, uh, check off all the previous episodes, and it still doesn't remember that. So yeah. I have to click never every single time. No, Chekhov's but, not on know. it yet. We have you. <laughs> he's not here until the second season. Yeah. No. I. I. I that's that's good to know. I. I know nothing about the character i've heard the name (laughs) that is it i cannot go further along with that reference other than recognizing it as a reference fair enough (laughs) all right so the very short summary on memory alpha exploring a distant region of space the enterprise is threatened by balok commander of a starship from the first federation that's Mm -hmm. it that's it that's the that's the the summary uh, Fair enough. I, I forgot the First Federation stuff already. Is is that an established thing? <laughs> Does that come back at all? No. We never hear from the First good. Federation ever again. Not in not in televised canon. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, uh, I figured. There are some very interesting little stories and sequels and stuff in novel form, but I doubt you'll ever get to those. Of course. Oh, no, I do not have the time to start collecting a hundred novels, let alone read them. A hundred? A hundred? I've got, like, probably over 500. I know, I know you do. I don't know how many are out there. Just, just, if I say I don't have time for a hundred, let alone. I think it's close to 900 now, but I'm not sure. Christ, they, they just keep pumping them out. I don't know where people get the time. I mean, it's been 60 years. Of course, of course, but but how many writers are allowed on this 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 IP? It's it's especially just in prose form because Christ, that's a lot of work. Yeah, like I'm not finished up with my own novel. I'd I'd imagine at some point I'd get tired of writing for other people's characters. Well, you know, the thing is, maybe it's, it's a- the fan fiction type thing where where people really like delving into an established world. I don't know. Maybe, but, you know... Probably I mean, different kinds of writers. I'm talking about, like, starting off in whatever it was, 67 or whatever, when the first one came out. And, you know, the 90s, we, there was a really big blow of just, oh, my God. Like, there were, like, three series, then four series, and... like It's they, always the fault of the 90s. They that's, had that, so that, many that... novels <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> oh, God. Um, we should get to the episode, probably. Sure. Um, one, one of the things I think is really interesting about this episode is it almost feels, and it's not officially, but it feels like a third pilot. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. It's very much not around the story. It's built around, we're introducing a bunch of new characters that are going to be your main cast from now on. Mm-hmm. And they're fleshing those out more and, and like introducing people like McCoy and Uhara and Sulu and Scotty and... Uh, and at that point, I'm like, okay, okay, that seems to be the focus here. Just establishing the crew more than having a really tight plot or anything. Because I feel like this one just sort of went on and on and on. But then when you get to point C, you really don't see the connection to point A anymore. Because mm-hmm. uh, it, it, they, they're, they're trying very hard to like misdirect you. And, and at that point, you're... 
th- that goes for for the other episode as well. I think we've mentioned, but it's 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 the the okay. We're we're trying to see if there's if there's there's a, a threat there. There's there's but but he's like Balok is testing their good intentions. Yeah. So it's it, but but that requires him letting them escape. To see if they'd rescue him, but that mm-hmm. is after all of the threatening bullshit and yeah. the the, bl- the poker bluffs, and uh, it's <laughs> it's it just sort of keeps going to a place where I don't see the hole anymore. It's it's there. There's just parts that perfectly make sense because the bluff, the chess versus poker thing, is a very fun solution to the problem. But then yeah. the problem turns out to be something else because I get that they go ahead and save them, but then the twist around that he's fine is just wait did you just think to do that just now or was that the plan all along because they had to put in some effort to break away from that tractor beam so it's there's there's a lot of confusion in there as well because because that just leaves me like okay but why are you threatening to destroy the ship like what what would you have done at the end of the 10 minutes if they hadn't bluffed are you just testing their intelligence and their good intentions yeah it's, that's exactly what Baylock's doing. I guess, but it's it just it flows somewhere. Yeah, I think like I'm. He, okay. he has a scarier alien built just to intimidate the, yeah. the, the the Enterprise, and then it's both seeing if they're smart enough to escape, and otherwise they're not worth talking to. But if they're smart enough to escape, he has to test if they're nice enough to come back for him. So he, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it felt overly complicated in the moment where I was just like, OK, this is a twist that sort of came out of nowhere for me. And you didn't have enough time to sink, l- let that sink in of like, no, this was this was a yeah. coherent plan all along. Yeah. I feel like that was where it was sort of huh to me where I, like, yeah, I, 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 I get what you're trying to say, but I'm not sure it all worked it just sort of kept going and and didn't then they felt it felt segmented in that way and of course you have the the natural flow of of between commercials but it is uh i say natural that's that's weird it's it's still arbitrary but Mm -hmm. um you those those segments sometimes just feel like okay how did we how did we get here how is this the same uh person we're engaging with i guess um which requires me you you to go at the end like oh no he's, he's all, it's all it was all pretend okay so yeah he needed a companion at, at that point I, I i think i would would have loved to know okay so there's a giant ship he's in control of he's the only one and also yeah the Viserius. but but do they have that power and that intelligence to to blow up the enterprise and and not really care for most species or which parts are like how benevolent is this baylock or yeah. or that's like I feel like at the end you just get the twist of he looks like a baby and 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 nothing <laughs> beyond like it's it's just it's just you have a weird face instead of the other weird face and and not you know yeah you know what this is why this is why when Kirk was like I have questions Balok said of course but first the Tranya it's like no we're gonna get drunk first because this is gonna be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that 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 explains. I should have had some drinks before before watching. You that. should have had some Tranya. Yeah, yeah. Where where do I get that? Is that an American <laughs> supermarket thing? Because I feel like you have a lot more options than I, I do. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I think as I told you on this show, or, or uh, not off the show. I mean, off um, off off the record. Yeah, um, the kid playing uh, Baylock was Clint Howard who is a very well-known character actor and the brother of um, Ron Howard, who was, you know, Opie on the Andy Griffith show. And he was on Happy Days. And he's like a really big director now. Um, What's really great is Clint Howard comes back in Discovery as some like random lowlife on a planet. That's amazing. Who's like guzzling Tranya. (laughs) He's not playing Baylock. that's, that's, That's good. That's good. I love it when they like honor the past in really dumb, subtle ways. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I don't think this was like an incohesive episode. I think it was a mostly boring episode. 
maybe that's it. Maybe I'm trying to find too much in there. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm like, it's it just sort of eh, it, it just sort of goes on and on. Because there's there's the the there's in there's there's moments you remember and then there's a whole lot of in between. Right. I, I remember the resolution more than the tension building of just I don't know what's going on, but that has so much time spent on it that the resolution feels a bit rushed or or not thoroughly explained mm. but also i i probably was looking for explanations a whole lot in those segments where you get bored yeah i think this is most importantly uh, a, a character piece like there is that yeah. i feel like there's a very clear moral here that like not everything is as it seems you know uh, mm-hmm. So you don't don't be prejudiced. Yeah, don't be prejudiced. Don't like just go crazy and try to kill people. You know them shooting Doesn't the cube work. in the yeah. first place is what got him in the hot water. Anyway, yeah. so um, but maybe don't destroy shit. <laughs> right, even if it keeps you there for eighteen hours. Now it's time to blow it up. Yeah. Um, but you know, I did like as much as it was kind of boring to me in times. Like I did like the the slow. Uh, the slow boil watching Bailey just kind of breaking under the pressure. And it's one mm-hmm. of my favorite uh, examples of how really hard Kirk is on his crew. Cause he's such a dick to Bailey, dude. He's such a dick. And McCoy is just like, you promoted him too quick. Mm. You thought he was too much like you and you, you threw him into yeah. shit and you made a mistake. Um, I and I love which, that, which doesn't help because I feel like that also eggs him on in like being tough on the guy because you need to make my expectations come true and um, I feel th- th- it's interesting that they point out that that dynamic of like oh I see something in you that reminds me of a younger me and now now I need you to actually be good at this you know yeah uh, which is is very interesting but it's also it says a lot about him I I also love the fact that. I, I love the addition of McCoy. How do you feel about McCoy? Is this your first time seeing McCoy, the Corbin might maneuver? This is his first episode. And I love that dynamic between yeah. him and uh, him and Kirk. I get that. And it's, it's, he is, it, um, cause it, it's, it's a lesser in the other episode. It, it is now that I've, uh, cause this one's, <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've seen the next one. So I'm, 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 I'm having to go back to, to what, cause I think, there is a very fun dynamic there, but there's also more conflict there in this episode than there is in some others. So there's, mm-hmm. uh, so it was an introduction of sorts, but also I, I, I wasn't yet sure who to, who to agree with where and, and how to, I was still sort of figuring out how they were working in a sense. Cause it's at the end, there's the, the, the sort of apology and the, the, the and they work things out. Yeah. So I, I, but I, I wasn't entirely sure who, 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 like they both sort of compromised on that argument, which I guess is, is good. That's usually mm-hmm. how you resolve conflict. Um, but I feel like it didn't tell me much about McCoy yet, just about mm-hmm. his, his humanity and like, okay, go easy on the dude because you promoted him real quick and we're all dead ass calm in here and just, doing some some peaceful understanding and decision making and staying real eerily calm and of course he's gonna flip um mm-hmm. because it's it, yeah it's scary stuff and you're confronted with death suddenly um or at least the the uh the 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 uh the, the countdown to death yeah yeah i which think... really begins when you're born so in that sure. sense shouldn't shouldn't have been that panicky <laughs> right um yeah, so I think there's a lot of great character work, honestly, with with McCoy here because, uh, you know, we we really get the sense that he and Kirk have been friends, have known each other for a long time. Like he has that statement, you know, uh, about how he reminds him of Bailey, uh, or ba- Bailey reminds him of himself about eleven years ago. McCoy's the one that points that out. He says, yeah. "Say eleven years ago." Like so, McCoy has at least known Kirk for that long. Yeah, there is, you know that about them, and just the fact that he can speak up to the captain like that just speaks volumes in terms of, yeah, there's there's an established relationship here and a mutual respect that means they can they can do that. 
And also and a playfulness. That's good to have. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's no sense of it's it's like they 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 can they can bounce off each other. They mm-hmm. can take it, and there's there's a bit of a push and pull there. Yeah, I love everything about like how Kirk is like. I've heard you say bloody da, and he's like, I don't ever say that. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's multiple times that i love yeah, it yeah and you just know it's like you know i swear McCoy's full who, of shit. where else did i get it from <laughs> mccoy's full of shit you know it you know it's great I yeah love it. um so we for the first time ever we get the him saying what am i a doctor or a dot 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 right which is really a popular thing and he does it several times over the course of the series but it never feels like a catchphrase necessarily merchandising is made it that way but yeah yeah but it's you know uh i don't even remember what the other option was in this one uh what am i a doctor or a moon shuttle conductor this is when like uh this is when uh kirk is angry with him for having him in the middle of the physical and not telling him that the red alert was going off Ah, right. Yeah. And as which was just like I I never get to see you finish a physical, so I just had to keep this yeah. from you for another. Yeah. Which is great in and of itself because it also adds to that serious nature of Kirk always being like captain goes first, fucking yeah. the ship is my woman that they're really <laughs> hammering home. Um hammering I feel like home. that's the only point of the the short scene with the female yeoman like you have to eat and and the ship is my woman I don't I I like it's not that I don't trust myself I I trust myself extremely I have one woman and it's the enterprise and that's I I feel like they're 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 sticking to that quite well. Well I do think that Kirk um I think the thing about it though and I don't, I'm not sure that they had it so mapped out or anything. I don't think they did, but um, probably not. I think there is an idea based on how they portray it, where McCoy seems to know Kirk better than Kirk wants to believe. Yeah. So I think McCoy is right. He's like, "What's the matter, Jim? You yeah. don't trust yourself." I think, he, and I, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a defense mechanism to to say that, and that's probably why he keeps saying it, and why yeah. everyone keeps saying it because it's something you have to sort of believe in. But also, eh, well, to be fair, women. just to jump ahead, he I don't think he said it. Mud's women, Mud said that to deter what's her face. So right, right, right. Yeah, no, exactly. There's different people saying it constantly. Where the the, the crew also has to sort of buy in. Mm-hmm. People have to. But it's an established thing that yeah, this a ship's captain really loves her, their ship. Like mm-hmm. he does say it later a few times, but for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Um, because um, sorry. Um, no, you're good. Yeah, but I instantly lost my point as soon as I was like, "Am I talking over you?" And then I then I forgot what I was saying, uh, <laughs> which is great radio. Um, mm-hmm. It'll get back to me or not. You know how this works. <laughs> I do. I do. So uh, what I, the, while, you know, the, what am I a doctor or a moonshell conductor line is, that's the thing that always stuck. The part of that quote that I like more was him as Kirk leaves. He says, if I jumped every time a light flashed around here, I'd end up talking to myself as he's yeah. talking to himself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that That's just lovely irony. Like that's a good joke. I was very happy with that as well. Yeah. Um, so, and they do a lot of that with all of the characters here. And apparently like looking over some of the trivia, it looks like, uh, a lot of that character building little, like the little comments and stuff were not in the script. Um, oh. like the, um, like the stuff with, uh, with Scotty, um, talking about, uh, you have an annoying fascination for time pieces, Mr. Sulu, as he's doing the countdown that wasn't in there, you know, in the script. <laughs> So there were uh, there were some interesting things that weren't in there, and then there were also interesting things that I really liked it, with just within the episode. Um, you know, when he's when Kirk is talking to Spock, and he says, and Spock says, "Has it occurred to you that there's a certain inefficiency in constantly questioning me on things you've already made up your mind about?" And Kirk says, "It gives me emotional security." Yeah, like, which is just uh, oh. as a smart play on just. Suck it, Spock. You don't. You you don't have to get it. It's just. It's it's just a thing I like to do because I do have a lot of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. But there's uh, there's so much there's so much setup here. Like Sulu telling Bailey, "You try to cross brains with Spock, he'll cut you to pieces every time." 
Like yeah, it's like yeah. telling the audience, like this is how this is. This is how this is. This absolutely. That's why I say just, it's like a third the, pilot. And Spock being very happy, he has no adrenaline gland. Just just the comments about his biology uh, are 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 fun because I imagine people have tried and pieced together every single reference to his anatomy <laughs> and trying to like map it out. Yeah. Well, the the thing I love about that so much is like Spock is really funny. And he's just yeah. such a, he's got such a dry sense of, of humor. And this guy is like piece of shit nobody who <laughs> is going to yeah. try to tell, like be smart with Spock and be like, it doesn't mean I was scared or couldn't do my job. I happen to have a human thing called an adrenaline gland. And Spock's <laughs> just like, it does sound most inconvenient. However, have you considered having it removed? You know, yeah. like, oh my God, that's the... It's such a great comeback. Yeah, Spock is Spock is like an obvious favorite. Like, there's a reason yeah. that he stuck around. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I feel like in some ways, in the culture at large, he's he is more of a character than Kirk almost. Because I feel like everyone knows that far better than than the relatively like comparatively bland captain who is just there. Mm-hmm. Um, then that doesn't mean that that is all that Kirk is, but like if you think of Star Trek as a as a no as a noob as a nobody, uh, if you if you have very little affinity, otherwise you know outside of just cultural osmosis, it's it's like oh yeah Spock right yeah the the ears and the uh, I remember yeah. that yeah Spock and, and for and good reason McCoy seemed to be very you know if it wasn't for Shatner's overblown acting, which hasn't uh, to me has not been. <laughs> visible so far no no it's it's fine i'm not i hadn't really gotten to the point of having any issues with that no it's it's not the kevin pollack uh version of a little you know it's not that yet um it gets there from time to time but we'll see um looking forward to it (laughs) oh also not in the script uh the 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 exchange. I regret not having learned more about this Baylock. In some manner, he was reminiscent of my father. And Scotty says, "Then he- may heaven have helped your mother." And he says, "Quite the contrary. She considered herself a very fortunate Earth woman." Uh, yes, that's the first it's like just... actual mm. uh, lovely hint. Yeah, that wasn't in the script. Oh, okay. So, but they, I, I love that they they like, moved it from ancestors to actually his mother and father. Yeah, which is just a better story immediately. Yeah, and I like the headcanon that Spock felt more comfortable, so he was willing to admit that it was his parents. Yeah, because he looked more comfortable, and he was like, I can yeah. share this in, in confidence. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's a whole lot more to say about this episode, honestly. Like, I in, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, we we get the first time Uhura is saying hailing frequencies open captain. That is her thing. That's yeah. what she's known for saying. She's wearing, you know, a gold, a gold dress. By the way, do you like the mini dresses? Cause they're, they're here. I honestly hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hadn't really, I I wasn't paying attention to it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. It's now that you like... mention it, I'm like, Oh yeah. 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 That wasn't pants, but also yeah. I liked the, yeah, I, I, I feel bad because, like, I'm sitting there and, like, uh, the, Kirk's whole speech about having a female yeoman, and I, I chalk it up to less sexism and more him not trusting himself because, yeah. in my head, based on how they wrote him, he seems like he's, over the course of the series, he seems more a serial monogamist than anything, but uh, I also know Roddenberry saw him as, like, an outlet for himself, and uh, mm. Roddenberry was not a serial monogamist. So I'm very curious what what your thoughts are on that because it felt sexist, felt weird. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit off, and it's 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 weird. But also, I was still sort of confused about what the omen is supposed to do. It's not a, a function I'm necessarily familiar with. So it's, I, I I mean, I've seen her do nothing but bring him a meal, like, and it's yeah. it seems like a very close personal relationship in that sense where it's like, yeah, you're in my private quarters constantly. So I get that it would be a, a like, oh, this this feels slightly uncomfortable because I don't know what will happen. And, and I mean, 
there's there's a less sexist way of expressing uh, that it might not be like that you'd have to put up some boundaries as a professional like superior mm-hmm. to this this uh, female officer. But it's uh, yeah, it's 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 it felt also just sort of out of place to me because it was it added very little beyond the comment of do you not trust yourself, which is is very much I think what is going on there. There is just a oh I'm I'm he he gets uncomfortable every single time someone yeah. is See, attractive you say... and and throwing around uh, like throwing themselves at him and. Yeah, you say it adds very little, but I think it adds a hefty chunk to Kirk's character. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just, I meant in the context yeah. of the episode, it felt sort of out of place. It does add a lot to him, because we can talk about this for 10 minutes, but it uh-huh. is probably longer. <laughs> but, um, I'll uh, you know, I'll get more context as I see more episodes. But it... Uh, the, the 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 in in terms of the 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 story that's happening around that scene, it's very much like okay, the, why why was this this the highest priority? And that then gives me the sense of like ah, there wasn't that much to the story. There was just a lot of character work that they needed a backdrop for, which is fine because there is enough tension to believably have a bunch of crew freak out in different ways and and have some conflict in in the in the uh, on the bridge mm-hmm. and what i love is like mostly bailey's the only one freaking out like everybody else is just yeah. like this is a I'm tuesday this, sweetie this is my damn job yeah yeah i, I just feel <laughs> the way they look and they're like take him away and then everyone's just like no oh. and he's like uh, we're dying just, in like just get him out of here this, this was yeah <laughs> and they're like come on buddy it's okay. Yeah, yeah, we can't. We have no use for this kind of energy. L- l- leave us alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there there were things in this episode that I, I really enjoyed, and just it was a very slow burn episode. Um, but I do love getting. Yeah, those. there's a lot of waiting for the ten minutes, of course, which yes. is occasionally more tense than other times. Because at some point they do establish contact back and forth, and then it's like, ah, okay, okay, I see where this is going, sort of, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, hmm. Oh, uh, as for what the yeoman does, I don't know. Because, like, <laughs> Pike's yeoman brought him reports, and he, like, snapped at her and bit her head off, almost. Yeah. And he also bitched about a woman being on the bridge. Yeah. After she left. Um, then we have, you know, even though there was another one, but you know, yeah. it's very clearly just the young and pretty ones. Um, I, I, I know Yeoman Rand, who is the Yeoman here. Uh, mm. we will later see her. She's also brings like meals to the, um, to the senior staff, all of the senior staff. She's just in charge of getting their meals and stuff. Um, and I don't remember what all, I don't, I don't, I'll try to pay more attention because I don't really like her. I don't like mm. her. I don't like the, the character very much. Um, but she's only in six episodes. Oh. For a horrible, sucks. sad reason. Mm. A producer, we're pretty sure Gene Roddenberry, tried to have sex with her and she turned him down. God damn it. Oh, no. You can't do that in the entertainment industry. God, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a darn shame. I don't dislike her for that reason. I just never really cared no, about no, her no. character. It's, it's just they, yeah, they never gave her a fucking chance to do anything in the, at that point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did like the first Yeoman better, but that's... I did that's too. Better. Yeoman Colt was awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah, with her overactive female drives. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that line. That gives me something to relate to, you know? Abnormally... <laughs> What was it? Abnormally strong female drives. Yeah. It's like, okay, we get it. She's young. She's horny. But like, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so, I gotta ask, are, d- d- watching this episode, did it make you excited to watch more episodes? Or did it, was it like, oh my god, if this they're, if they're all like this, I'm, I'm gonna stop this right now? Um, no, no. It's, it's, it's like, it wasn't like A tier, oh, I'm super excited to move on. It also wasn't D tier of like I never want to see anything like this again. Like it was just, just sort of like, oh, I can, I can deal with this. This is just, 
if it, it's not exactly a, 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 a it's not a trash can episode it's 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 not throwaway it's just sort of fine entertainment for an hour you know it's just okay mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning more about these characters and that that's that's good enough like i i enjoy spending time in this space yeah um more than it is oh this is brilliant fucking storytelling because we're not we're also not quite there yet and i'm guessing there's just occasional episodes that really stand out um and the other ones are gonna be just good fun and yeah. that's that that works for me yeah, because that that and then and at that rate, I also don't quite know what I'm getting into each time, which is fun. Yeah. Uh, did you notice that they had for this episode they'd once again changed, maybe, probably for the thing the third time, changed <laughs> Spock's eyebrows. <laughs> and this time, no. dude, this time they gave him like some eyeshadow. Like he he was glammed up. Like he had some glitter. Oh yeah, eyeshadow. yeah. I did notice he had some 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 like some some eyeshadow bling just just to darken up the the lids but what changed with his eyebrows again because i feel like they're just weird every time and then yeah. that's all i register yeah i haven't looked closely i think it was like they were real bushy in the cage and and pointed and then like in where no man has gone before they were like bushy but also like slanted up more pronounced and ah, now, now okay. they're like just more like real eyebrows that are just kind of pointy Okay. But now he's got okay. like the eye makeup, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which you know, uh, <laughs> queer Trek on Twitter sometimes claims <laughs> that that's indication that he he might be of a. Uh... He, ju- he just likes a bit of fun gender <laughs> expression. L- leave yeah. the man his eyeshadow; it looks good on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you have any... that that sort of yellow tinge in your skin, like like blue goes really well with it. It's a yeah. nice contrast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is. I think this episode is also the most green they ever made him, where they're just like packing it on, like they like. Oh, oh man, you're an alien. You're green and yellow, and and then like yeah, the rest a, of the series, a, he pretty much just a, looks like a human. <laughs> it's a yeah, years. yeah. There's 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 a color, but that's slightly different and not quite. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's it's not quite skin because you you can tell there's there's a layer on there indeed, but it's. I don't know. It it will 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 see the evolution of of his look, but that's also the fun of it, where it's like, yeah, he's, he's half human. We can get away with him not being outlandishly uh, off. Yeah, it was funny. We uh, my wife asked me. She was like, "Did they intend it to look like all of the men were wearing so much makeup?" And I was like, "No, they did that for old school standard rabbit ears TV. They had no idea we'd have high definition film." That we yeah, were going to clean yeah, up like, and and play. That's why you can see we're Shatner's just gonna lace do on his restorations of this footage. Like, no, it was for black and white tiny ass TVs yeah. with a box behind it that was bigger than the front. Like, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, listen, everyone. If you are enjoying this show and you want to send us feedback and go along with us on this original series review journey. Uh, Star Trek Ucast over on Twitter. You can, uh, Star Trek Ucast at gmail.com. You want to send us an email. Um, all I ask is since Matt and I are also still doing our Strange New Worlds new episodes, um, just separate separate the emails, please. Please. Love of God. Make it easier on me. <laughs> just, um, just put put it in the subject line what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's fair for. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I've I've heard yeah. that before. There, there's a reason they invented that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for listening to Star Trek Universe, and we'll be back soon with more Star Trek review content. Thank you, Effie. I I'd assume so. I'll be there. Like I I, I hope you show up as well. I, I'll probably be there unless I die. Oh well, my god! I, in that case, I meant to say I hope you don't die. Yeah. <laughs> In ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe Lontru, live long and prosper, and whatever else we're supposed to say here. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 